yields. Yields in chemistry are about how much product you're actually obtaining from a set amount of reactant. A yield is um, calculated by um, looking at the percentage conversion rate of one substance to another. Very rarely in chemistry do we get everything we want converted exactly into the product that we want. Normally, um, there's some things that um, you get byproducts coming out of this. So if you have a reaction, if you um, that reaction can occur in two different ways. One might produce the reactant that you want, another produces a reactant that you uh, um, a product that you don't really want. So byproducts basically means you're producing two products, one of which you want, one is a byproduct, something that you don't want. Um, another way that you don't get 100% um, yield is due to incomplete reactions, where um, a reaction will stop before it can be completed. A notable one of these is the production of ethanol from glucose. You won't get 100% yield conversion there because the reaction will stop due to the catalyst being the yeast dying after a while. When you put in multiple steps, your reaction, your, um, in your reaction, so if you have an organic pathway which requires multiple steps, your percentage yield will drop even more so because every reaction you do will have a percentage of that going somewhere where it shouldn't be. The reaction yield is calculated by looking at how much you can theoretically obtain from a certain amount of reactants and dividing it by how much you actually obtain as well from the reactants that you actually do in the experiment. You can look at it like this. Practical mass, so an experimental mass, divided by the stoichiometry mass, and then multiply that by 100%. So you're getting a percentage of your stoichiometry mass obtained in an experiment. Basically, with this, your stoichiometric mass can be obtained just by looking at a simplified equation. For example, a basic equation could be looking at ethene forming ethanol. Even though you don't really care about the rest of the reactants, what you do care about is that one ethene molecule will end up forming one ethanol molecule. So a simple reaction like this will tell you that the mole ratio of ethene is equal to ethanol. Let's have a look at an example of um, calculating the percentage yield in the reaction. Here it is. 2 grams of ethane is converted in through a series of reactions to 2.3 grams of ethanol. Calculate our percentage yield. Now, let's have a look at how we do this. First of all, we understand that percentage yield is equal to the practical mass divided by the stoichiometric mass. Our practical mass is our 2.3 grams of ethanol. That's what we actually obtained in our experiment. Our stoichiometric mass, we need to obtain and we need to calculate that. So let's have a look at our stoichiometric mass. We've got our reactant ethane. Let's find out the number of moles of ethane. Number of moles equals the mass over the molar mass, so it's 2 divided by 30, and you get 0.067 mole of ethane. A simple equation will tell me that 1 mole of ethane will produce 1 mole of ethanol. Even though it's through a series of complicated reactions, I do understand that one of these will produce one of those. So therefore I can do stoichiometry and think about that if I have one of these, I'm producing one of these, so therefore my number of moles of ethane is going to be equal to my number of moles of ethanol, which is also going to be 0.067. Now, what I need to find out is the mass of ethanol that can stoichiometrically be produced. So, so theoretically be produced. Now, my mass is equal to my number of moles times my molar mass, so I times it by 46 being the molar mass of ethanol, and I obtain 3.06 grams is the theoretical amount that I can actually produce of ethanol. So my percentage yield is, in fact, my practical mass, 2.3, divided by my stoichiometric theoretical mass, which is 3.06, times 100 gives me 75.1% yield for this reaction here. Remember, percentage yield is practical over the stoichiometric. Things get a bit complicated when you have um, successive yields. So for instance, if your reaction pathway has numerous um, steps, 
each time you do a reaction, what's going to happen is you're going to get less and less yield. So let's take this for example. A is converted to B, is converted to C, is converted to D. If 80% reaction 1, A to B is 80% efficient, reaction 2 is 20% efficient, reaction 3 is only 90% efficient. How much, what is my actual percentage yield from A all the way through to D? Well, I need to look at what 20% of 80% is and what 90% of what that is. Easy way of doing that, multiply them all together and multiply it by 100 gives me the overall yield is only 14.4%. Okay, I look at 20% of 80 is what and then 90% of that number will give me my overall yield. So if you can think about it, it's actually 0.2 time, so 8 times 0.2 times 0.9. So that's my overall yield. Multiply all the um, percentages together, multiply by 100, that gives you your yield. So that's yields. You understand how to calculate percentage yield and you understand how successive yields work. How if you have a reaction pathway and you know the percentage of each reaction, how to get the overall yield from that. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, if it doesn't, well, look at it again or email me or try and find a question involving it and then look at the answer as well. Till then, till next time where we look at biomolecules, take it easy and I'll hopefully get the biomolecules stuff up very, very soon.